All around the stack is plant. The stalker chased the bandit. The stalker thought was all in fun. Hop! Goes the bandit. During the last couple of years, we have noticed that Hollywood has gone creatively bankrupt. It's like they've run out of ideas, and instead of hiring talented people, they're ticking diversity checkboxes like they're filling out a shopping list. The result? A depressing decline in quality, with the few remaining talented filmmakers handcuffed by nonsense like the Bechdel test and pandering to the so-called modern audiences. And because Hollywood no longer has any creative ideas, we have seen them take old movies and video games to remake them into soulless cash grabs. And to Noon's surprise, we have seen the vast majority of these adaptations failing spectacularly. The latest and probably the biggest failure from Hollywood on these video game adaptations has to be Borderlands. This is a movie based on a video game which had quite a lot of hype a few years ago, but the game still has a built-in fan base. I am one of the people who enjoys the game and the universe, and I am adding a video of me playing the game as background, since I cannot show you scenes from the movie itself. The game is fun, chaotic, and has interesting and fun characters. So. When word got out that Hollywood was planning a movie adaptation, alarm bells started ringing. After the absolute messes they made of Halo and The Witcher, it's safe to say expectations were lower than a snake's belly. So when the movie debuted on Rotten Tomatoes with a big fat 0%, I wondered if it was really that bad. A few hours after that, the score reached 4% because this shill said that she never played the games but she gives it a good review because she likes Kate Blanchett. I have played the games myself, and I also really liked Kate Blanchett in several movies. But after seeing this Borderlands movie, I wonder how could anyone give it a positive review and still keep a straight face? We knew this movie was doomed from the moment they announced the casting. Lilith is played by a 55-year-old actress trying way too hard to be a badass. Moxie is played by a 62-year-old actress who's clearly aiming for sex bomb, but ends up somewhere around Grandma's Night Out. And Tannis is played by a 65-year-old actress straining to look like she knows what a science book is. It's almost like they're trolling us at this point. This is a movie based on a game played by young people, and they took three female characters which were young and hot, and have cast in these roles three 60-years-old grandmothers. Yeah, brilliant idea. These actresses might have a ton of experience, but in these roles, they are about as convincing as a rubber sword in a medieval battle. Now let's talk about the rest of this mess. The casting is just the tip of the iceberg. As one review so beautifully puts it, and I quote, but this sci-fi gobbler mixes inept directing, terrible writing, indifferent acting and god-awful CGI into such stupefying boredom, it feels like nothing could top it for badness." End quote. From the very first scene, you can feel the lack of chemistry between the actors and the characters. It's like they just met five minutes before shooting. In the games, that chemistry is palpable, but here it's like watching a dried-up riverbed. Roland, which is a huge muscular character in the game, always serious, smart and badass, is played by teeny tiny Kevin Hart. Casting a comedian to play a serious character was just another inexplicable decision by these so-called filmmakers. The story is a complete joke, the humour falls flat, and watching 60-year-old women try to act like badass action heroes is as awkward as it sounds. They had a chance to do one thing right and cast the same actor from the game to voice the robot Claptrap, but they have decided to go with Jack Black, and throughout the movie I couldn't decide which was more annoying, Jack Black's grating attempt to mimic Claptrap or the actress they picked for Tiny Tina. While Tiny Tina was fun and chaotic in the game, here she's just plain irritating and fails to capture the quirky charm of the original character. 
The only thing this dumpster fire gets right is the costume design and vehicles. They're well represented, but honestly, how hard is it to get that right? In the end, the Rotten Tomatoes score is absolutely justified. Sure, they didn't hammer you over the head with messaging, but let's be real, all the female characters are tough, smart, and badass, while all the men are idiots, weaklings, or outright evil. Same old tired scenario, just wrapped in a different, equally disappointing package. So at the time I'm making this video, the movie's sitting at a pitiful 6% with critics and a 34% audience score. Frankly, even that seems too generous. With a budget of $120 million, this disaster needs to rake in around $300 million just to break even. But after sitting through it in a nearly empty theater with zero buzz even among gamers, I can confidently predict this is going to flop harder than a dead fish on dry land. It's mind-boggling how badly they screwed this up. The second Borderlands game was a massive hit. All they needed to do was cast actors who actually looked the part, were young enough to embody the characters, and toss in a solid villain like Handsome Jack with his charisma and good looks. That's it. They could have made a movie that appealed to both die-hard fans and the average Joe. But nope. Instead, we get 65-year-old Jamie Lee Curtis struggling through action scenes, looking like she needs a nap. A 62-year-old actress with her cleavage practically on display, massacring a terrible accent while trying and failing to capture Moxie's sexy vibe. And a 55-years-old Kate Blanchett punching guys out while wearing a face like she's perpetually constipated. They're all pitted against a villain with the charisma of a wooden plank, who looks like a used car salesman from the suburbs, with zero intimidation factor and zero gravitas. And by the second half of the movie, you sometimes get the feeling like you're trapped in a nightmare, where you're constantly surrounded by bickering old women. Honestly, I feel bad for the actors. Some of them are great in other films, but this has to be one of the worst projects they've been part of, when even IGN can't find something nice to say about a movie, you know it's trash. And IGN, let's face it, usually gives glowing reviews to anything that pushes the message. And this picture from the movie perfectly encapsulates the description of the movie with one word, trash. There was a time when I genuinely hoped Hollywood could make decent video game movies. Now I'm just praying they leave my favorite games alone. After the butchery of The Witcher and Halo, I'm in constant fear of what they'll ruin next. As for this Borderlands movie, I don't even blame wokeness for this failure. This just felt like a movie made by amateurs, poorly written, poorly directed, and utterly clueless. Last year, Super Mario proved that a video game adaptation can succeed on the big screen if it's done by people who actually care about the source material. My suggestion to you guys is, regardless on whether you have played the game or not, don't waste your time on this dumpster fire. It's not worth it. Go rewatch Deadpool or Wolverine, or just binge some YouTube videos. Your time will be better spent. As for me, I'm diving back into the second Borderlands game and hopefully erase any memory of this movie from my brain. Thanks for watching. Drop a like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.